All right, so I asked you to um, list all the factor pairs for 12. Who would like to share with me what they have? Rachel, what's one of your factor pairs? Um, one. And? Two. No, one, it's a factor pair. It's the two factors that go together. So what goes with one? One times what equals 12? There you go. There's one factor pair. Does someone have a different one? Um, eight in. Two and six. And another one, Erin. Three and four. Three and four. Okay. Um, what Rachel was starting to do, I think, was give us all the factors. If we were to write the factors, all the factors for 12, what would I write next? Two. Two. Ten. Three. Four. Six. Six. Four. Okay. Remember, we write them in order from least to greatest when we're all done. If you write it like this, 2 and 6 and 1 and 12 and 3 and 4, this is not the correct way to write it. Okay? So remember that. All right, we are on 5-4. Toy animals are sold in sets of 3, 5, 10, and 12. Mason wants to make a display with three animals in each row. Which set could he buy if he wants to display all the animals? We did something similar to this last week. Do you guys remember? Yeah. Or two weeks ago? When they were talking about putting them on shelves and, and what is what is the question asking us? What is he what do they want to know? Sophia. Which sets could he buy if he wants to display all the animals? Okay, so which sets could he just could he buy if he wants to display all of the animals? How many animals can be on a shelf? Shelf or in a row? Three. Three. So that number is going to be important. I'm going to put that over here too. The question is, how many animals are in each row? There'll be three. This is really glaring today. All right. How many animals are sold in each set? What are the different amounts in each set? We have three, what else? Five. five. Sets of five, sets of? Ten. And sets of? Twelve. Now, try to visualize what it's asking you. See, there's these little toy animals. And a lot of times you can buy like a bag of animals. Put the pen down. Thank you. You can buy a bag of animals. So imagine yourself, you're buying this little package that has three animals in it. Or you're buying a little package that has five, or 10, or 12 little animals in it. Now they want to display, you want to display these animals, three animals to a row. That's what the question's asking you. Okay? So one way to find, find the answer to this would be to tell whether three is a factor of each of these numbers up here if three is a factor. Why would three being a factor be an important question to ask? I'm gonna ask, is three a factor? Is three a factor of these numbers? Why am I gonna ask that question? Preston. Three is a factor and because you need to see how much there is. Right, because three is how many go in each row, yeah. and we wanna find out if it's gonna go evenly, correct? Yeah. Okay, so looking at the first First three right here. That's this three right here. Okay. Is three a factor of three? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Right? Because the factors of three are one and three. Is three a factor of five? I want you to think before you answer. Is three a factor of five? Raise your hand when you know. Is it? No. No. There's only two factors of five. What are they? One and five. Is three a factor of ten? I want you to raise your hand when you know. Is three a factor of ten? Is it? No. No, what are the factors of ten? One. Oh, stop for a second. One. What's next? Two. Five. Ten. There you go. Is three a factor?
factor of 12? Raise your hand when you know the answer. Lydia, is 3 a factor of 12? Yes. Yep. That wasn't Lydia, but it was yes. Okay, what are the factors of 12? Let's do them. 1, obviously. Six, no, two, what's going to be next? 2, two three, 3, 4, 6, 12, 12. Remember, we did that on the board just a minute ago. All the factors. You're looking down again. Um, 3 is a factor of which two numbers then that we chose up there? 3 and 12. 3 and 12. 3 and 12. Those are the ones that we said yes to. So this was one way to find out um, if 3 is a factor of those. You can also plan out your rows. Start with one row of 3. How many animals would that be? One row of three would be three. three animals. Two rows of three would be six. Three rows of three. Nine. Nine. We don't. It's not a race. Four rows of three. Twelve. Twelve. And five rows of three. <laughs> okay. Which ones are multiple? Which of the numbers that were given up here? We can just look at them here. Three, five, ten, and twelve. Which of those do you find up here? Raise your hand when you can tell me. Which of these 3, 5, 10, and 12 are in our factors here? Or in our number 10? Owen. 3 and 12. 3 and 12. So this is just another way of doing it. Instead of individually finding out what if 3 is a factor of these numbers individually, you can just find all the factors of 3 for a while. Obviously, that's not all the fact, all the numbers that 3 factors into. That's not even. Uh, there, it goes infinite, forever. So Mason can buy sets of 3 and or 12. A common multiple is a multiple of 2 or more numbers. You're going to read that with me now. So, let's see what that means. What do they mean by that? Tony works every three days, and Amanda works every five days. If Tony works June 3rd, and Amanda works June 5th, on what days in June will they work together? This is kind of tricky. Circle multiples of three, and draw a box around multiples of five. Now, we did multiples here. I was saying factors, but it's, it's multiples. Right here, we did fact, is three a factor of the, these numbers? Here, we did the multiples. So here was the multiple of one times three, two times three. Um, the, the numbers up here are the multiples. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. And we're going to find a common multiple of five and three. Because we want to know what days they're going to work together. So if Amanda works, I'm sorry, Tony works every three days, and we are supposed to circle Tony's days. He starts on the third. What's the next multiple of th um, three? Six. And then? Nine. And then? Twelve. I should not see your pencils. And then? Fifteen. And then? Eighteen. And then? Do you see a pattern? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Super cool, right? Okay, then we need to do what for um, Amanda's days? What does is, what is my instruction tell me to do? Draw a box. Draw a box. So we're going to start with 5. What's the next multiple? 10, 15, 20, 20, Hold on, hold on. I'm not even there yet. 20. 5. 25. 30. How many days are they going to be working together? Five. Two, two, two days. Five. Which two days? 30 and 15. How about 15 and 30? Yeah. So looking back at this, it says, so Tony and Amanda will work together on June 15th and 30th. You probably already wrote those in. Now, we had a nice, easy way to figure this out because we had a calendar with the numbers to be able to figure out the common multiples. However, you don't usually have a diagram to show you. So the best, one of the ways you can do this 
is to take, you have 3 and 5. Remember when we did common factors, we listed the factors below and then circled the ones that were in common? We can do the same thing for the multiples. So we can go, in this case, we know we're going up to a calendar, so we know we can only go up to 30 or 31, right? Because there's no more than 31 days in a month. So I know my stopping point is 31. I'm going to stop at, stop at 31. Although it's June, so I know it's 30. So stop at 30. So I'm going to do my multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Okay, and then I'm going to do my multiples of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And since I have less of the 5s, I'm going to use those numbers and check over here. So I'm going to say 5. Is there any 5 over here? Nope. Is there any 10? No. Is there any 15? Yes. Is there any 20? Yes. No. Is there any 25 over no. here? No. Is there any 30? Yes. That's how I check. That's the easiest and quickest way for me to check what the common multiples are. Okay? So this is how you can do it. You can also do it this direction, like 3 and 5. You know, like on one line on your paper, the 3 on the top and the 5, and then you would just put, okay, 3, 6. Are you guys following that idea? Yeah. Yeah. And so you can do it sideways, too, if you like that better. All right, multiply to, multiply to list the next five multiples of 4. So 4, and then my next one's going to be one or 2 times 4, which is? 8. And then I'm going to have 12. Okay, I want everybody else to finish this on their own, and then I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm writing the wrong numbers. 3 times 4, 4 times 4, 5 times 4, and 6 times 4. Finish it up, and then we're going to share it. All right, what came after 16, everybody? 20. 20, and then? 24. Thank you. All right. Um, so those are all the what? Factors. Nope, not factors. Multiples. Multiples is, think about multiples as when you multiply it by the next number and then the next number. Multiples, it's multiplying it by the next numbers. Factor is when you break it down into, into smaller groups, smaller numbers to multiply together to make your part. Is the number a factor of six, right? Yes or no? Now we're on factor. So underline factor on your paper. This is not multiple. This is factor. Is 3 a factor of 6? I want you to think about it first. Is it a factor of 6? Raise your hand when you know. You guys like my pretty pink today? Yeah. I, had, I went to a party where, did I tell you guys that already? The 80s party? No. no. I didn't tell you it was your name's for? Yeah. I, that's what I thought I did. I heard you talking to a teacher. I, on the way back, huh? I went to um, an 80s theme party. I'll have to show you my outfit. I look pretty stinking 80s. But there's my hot pink fingernails. And I saved them for you guys. Okay. So, is 3 a factor of 6? Yes. Yes, it is. Go ahead and write it. I want you to think, is 6 a factor of 6? Yes. yes. That was not thinking, but yes, that works. <laughs> okay, think. Is 16 a factor of 6? I want you to think. Is it? No. No, no it is not. We're not saying out loud. Thinking. Is 18 a factor of 6? I want you to think. Hold on. I want you to think about the question. Think about the question. Is 6 a factor of 18? Yes. No. 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 Okay, if you are saying no and would like to explain why no is the answer, raise your hand. Ethan. 18 does not go into 6. 18 does not go into 6. It is not a factor. It is a what? Multiple. 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 Very good. So no, and I'm actually going to put it's a multiple, though. There you go. That's my answer. Look at me being above and beyond. <laughs> no, you're okay. 
Okay, now we're going to ask the question, is the number a multiple of 6? Is 3 a multiple of 6? Can I times a number by 6 and get 3? Yes. No. 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 Not a whole number. I can multiply half. Half of 6 is 3. But I can't multiply a whole number and get 3. So this is not a multiple. Can I multiply a number times 6 and get 6? Yes. yes. So it is a multiple. Can I multiply a number times 6 and get 16? No. no. Can I multiply a number times 6 and get 18? Yes. 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 yes, that's what I just said right up here, isn't it? Is this number a multiple of 3? Remember, you're going to be asking yourself the question, can I multiply 3 times a number and end up with this answer? That's the question you're asking yourself. I want you to do all four right now. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. And you will not go ahead. So do one, two, three, four problems and then stop. Was, three a was four a multiple of three? No. What about eight? No. What about 24? Yes. What about 38? No. Very good. I think you guys get this. All right. The rest of this, it looks like I'm looking through and I'm seeing multiple um, we're looking for common multiples. Down here, it's going to ask whether 20 is a factor or a multiple of the number. You could have a number. One of the answers could potentially be both. So, um, so factor, multiple, or neither, or both. Because let me think. I see one that's a factor and a multiple. It's both. So um, when you're doing this one, we'll just do the first one real quick together. So the, remember, remember I said you could write it sideways and I put that little dot dot, the colon. What are the multiples of 2? Um, it says list the next 9 multiples. It tells me how many to do. Remember, we usually have to have some kind of limit. So 9. So 2, what next? One, 4, 10, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Hold on, let me see if I've done 9, nine yet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What's next? Eight, eight, eight. And then? 20. 20. Write the next nine multiples of eight and then stop. Do it together. All right, eight. What's next? 16. Okay. 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72. That's probably nine right there. All right. We're, now we need to find the common multiples. There, we did 10 multiples of each one. I'm going to start with the lower number then. Is there a 4 down here? No, we don't even, our first one's not even, don't forget there's an 8. Our first one's not until 8. So 8. What's our next one? 16. And then is there an 18? No more, is there? 24. Oh, did I miss? Oh, no, because we've only done 9. Oh, yeah. We're only going up to 9. So the common multiples for the, the t there's a total of 10 multiples. They did the first one. We did the rest. So out of the 10 multiples that they've done, their only common ones are 8 and 16. And that's how you do those. 